name is Karina and welcome to my channel. Today I would like to talk to you about panic or anxiety attacks and what I have done to overcome them. share with you the things that I have done to overcome panic and anxiety that I had been suffering from years ago. Lately, for whatever reason, I have seen and read a lot. I've seen things on YouTube and I've read things in magazines and stuff like that of panic and anxiety and how people are truly suffering from panic and anxiety. I don't know why. It's probably many, many reasons. Um, and I figured I would share with you what, how I dealt with it, what we figured out, and how I overcame it without medication. Um, years ago, my dad passed away, and he passed away from um, heart conditions. And I had, it had been a while after he had passed away that I had went to the doctor and um, they had, in one of my exams, they had done a blood test. Well, I got the blood test back and the um, blood test come back that I had high cholesterol. And I was only, oh, I was probably about 27, 28. And I remember getting that paperwork and looking at it and reading it and I felt this warm, panic sensation go over me that I was so scared that I had high cholesterol at such a young age and that right away I started thinking I was going to die. I was going to die of a heart attack. I was going to die of, you know, and all this stuff started swirling around. At the time I had a four year old, Timothy was four I believe, to take care of and Justin was six. So that led into panic in the back of my mind apparently and it just built over time. I remember sitting and all of a sudden feeling this fear and my chest would clench and I would and I couldn't breathe and I would jump up and I would just take off and I I was like I'm dying. I all this stuff would go through my mind of oh my goodness is this it? Am I having a heart attack? Am I you know, what is going on with me? What is wrong with me? And I would feel like I could faint. I I would feel like my heart was pumping really hard. My chest was tightening. I was shaking. I was lightheaded. I could feel like everything moving in smaller and smaller. Like I could just pass out. I never really passed out, but I felt like I could. And I was in, I was so scared. And um, I remember saying to my husband, I was like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't understand what's going on. And he was like, I don't know. I don't know. And I'm like, do you think it could be a heart attack? And he's like, I don't know, Corey. My nickname's Corey. And he's like, I don't know. It could be, I don't know what it is. I'm not a doctor. I don't know. And I remember one night my mother-in-law at that time was going through surgery she had sugar diabetes and she was so young like in her late 40s early 50s and she had started losing her legs to sugar diabetes and um, she was in the hospital every year from the time Justin was born with pneumonia all kinds of really bad stuff and I remember her being in the Flint Hospital in Michigan and my father-in-law was down and I had one of those attacks and we had, um, my father-in-law was staying with us because we had lived closer to the hospital than he did. So he would just stay with us when she was in the hospital in Flint. And I just, I remember having one of those panic attacks and I was like, I don't know what's wrong with me, I don't know what's wrong with me. And he said, get her to the hospital. He told Jay, he goes, take her to the hospital. I will stay with the boys. They were already in bed sleeping. And so Jay took me to the hospital. Well, once I got to the hospital, to the emergency room, and they started asking me questions. They brought down a heart doctor. They hooked me up to monitors. They hooked me up to a blood pressure. And a heart doctor come down and he talked to me. And he said, Karina, what's wrong? 
And I said, I don't know. And I explained my symptoms and how I my chest would tighten and how I couldn't breathe, how I felt like I was going to faint. And I didn't know if I was having a heart attack or a beginning of a heart attack. I didn't know what was going on. And he said, um, I truly think that you are having a panic attack. And I said, what? And he said, yeah, I think you're having a panic attack. He said, I'm going to send you home with a monitor. I'm going to hook you up on a monitor and you will wear it for a week so that I can monitor your heart rate. I can monitor everything and then I will see you back, you know, in a week. And I'm like, okay. So I wore a heart monitor for a week and it come back and there was nothing wrong with my heart. Everything was good. So I went into my doctor. They suggested that I go to my family physician and I went into my family physician and I told her what was going on and she had the results and everything from the blood monitor or blood monitor the chest monitor and she said um you know that there were things that we could do that I could take I had my phone up because I looked it up but one of them they put me on Xanax which Xanax is a fast cure, it's not a long term cure, and you can get hooked on Xanax. So I did not want to take Xanax. I did take it a couple of times when I started feeling really, really, really panicky, but then I didn't, I, um, didn't really want to take Xanax because I didn't want to get hooked on it because you can't get hooked on it. Okay, and then she said I could go on Prozac, and I was like, no, no. I was completely against Prozac. I had seen people go on Prozac. My mom was one of them, and it, the um, side effects and stuff were really bad, and it's really hard to get off from, and it really controls your brain. I mean, I am not against any of these medications. I just want to state this. If these work for you, that's great. This is something that I had to deal with and that I had to find out because basically you do have to be your own doctor and you do have to do your own, you know, checking into stuff and figuring things out for your body and your life. So I didn't want to be on Prozac. I knew that for a fact because I had seen my mom on it and other people on it and I didn't want that. So she said, I could put you on, I believe it was Paxil. I don't think it was Zoloft. I think it was Paxil. And I was like, okay, we'll, we'll try it. And I said, well, what is it? And she said, it's basically a downer and it's going to calm you down. And it basically puts you in almost like a zombie mode in a way. I mean, you just feel really, really, really heavy. I still had them. I still had panic attacks on that medication, but I, on Paxil, but I did not have them to the extreme that I was having them. I remember sitting in line waiting for the boys to get out of school in, the, in our vehicle, picking them up, and I would have them even then. And I would want to get out of the van and just take off and just, I don't know where I wanted to go. I just wanted to get away from the panic. I wanted to get away from the tightening of my chest and not being able to breathe. And um, so I started on them and I gained so much weight. I was hungry all the time. I was so hungry. I wanted baked goods, donuts, cookies, bread. Um, I couldn't get enough. I was so hungry and I gained so much weight. I went from, I believe at that time when I started, I was about 150, I'm thinking, which was heavy, but, and I jumped up to two, I think I was 234, 234 pounds. I am 5'2", almost 5'3". And I have a smaller frame, so any weight I put on, I just balloon out. 234 may not seem big to some people, but to me. And the constant hunger, the constant craving, the constant, I could not get full. I could not get enough. Um, and I was like, what? I don't understand. And all this time I was crying, and I told Jason, I'm like, I, I don't understand my husband. And I was like, I just don't understand. And I mean, I have pictures of when Timothy was in kindergarten of me just being huge. I had to buy, I bought stretch pants 
Um, I was gaining weight so fast, I um, didn't fit into blue jeans. I just started buying stretch pants and stuff because I couldn't keep up with it, the weight gain. And so I... I was like, I can't, I can't do this. So I went back to the doctor and I was like, I am gaining so much weight. You can clearly see what, what is causing this. And she said, it's the medication. And I said, what? And she said, it's the medication. I said, take me off. And she said, if I take you off, you're going to go back into your real severe panic attacks. And I said, I don't care. I will figure it out. Take me off of this medication. And so I went off the medication under a doctor's supervision because you've got to be careful going on the medication and coming off of that medication because it does mess with your brain. It messes with your whole entire system. But I remember feeling so heavy, like there was a heaviness to my brain. And I was so just down and just really mellow <laughs> and stuff like that. I just remember, but it never cured it. It just took the edge off of it. And, and I gained a ton of weight in the process. So I never really cured it. So I cry, I was crying. I was praying. Oh, I was begging God, please, 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 please show me something. Show me something. What do I do? What do I do to overcome this? And Jason, my husband, was looking on the computer one day and he said, um, and we were both. I was on one computer, he was or I was on my laptop and he was on the computer. And we were looking, 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 looking. Because I'm like, there's gotta be something, a cure without all this medication. And um, he found this one thing on, I believe it was on YouTube, and, and to this day, I cannot find it. If I could find it, I would link it below, but I cannot find it. I have looked for this YouTube channel for so, so many times to help people that are going through it and let them hear what this guy is telling them. And this guy, it was a man, and he was telling people that suffer from it. He said, all you have to do, he said, this is something, it's a cure. This is a cure. He said, and it's going to take time. It's not overnight. It's not going to cure you instantly. It's not going to cure, like if I start doing it, it's not going to cure you tomorrow. This takes time. And it takes you to be on it constantly. But he, this is what he said. Panic and anxiety, I don't know so much about anxiety, but panic comes from fear. What are you afraid of? I'm asking you. What are you afraid of? And be honest with yourself. Be true. For me, it was, I was afraid of apparently death. I was afraid of heart attack. I was afraid of leaving my children at such a young age. I was afraid of all of that. I was afraid that my cholesterol was high and I was going to end up you know, who knows what. I was afraid of all of that. I had a lot of fear built up in me, and I didn't realize it. And so I had to really focus and say, Karina, what are you afraid of? What am I afraid of? And be honest, because this is just you. Just you asking questions and you answering yourself questions. Then he said, when you get another panic or anxiety attack, and you, you'll be, you could be sitting there. Like I remember watching TV and I was sitting there and all of a sudden I could feel it. And I could feel it building. And it was like shrink. It was just like. <gasps> and I wanted to jump up. And he said, stop. Stop. Don't jump up. Don't jump. Sit back. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Breathe. Relax. Say to yourself, in your mind or out loud, however it works for you, what am I afraid of at this moment? What am I afraid of? Calm down. Calm down. What are you afraid of? There is absolutely nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing that's going to happen to you. There's nothing going on. This should cause you this fear. Calm down. Just sit there. Just breathe. Just pray if you pray. Focus. Nothing's going to hurt you. Nothing is going to hurt you. You are fine. You are not having a heart attack. You are not having a stroke. 
You are not having nothing. Nothing is wrong with you. And he said that when you jump up and you take off or you start, like I would jump up off the couch and I would start walking. He said when you do that, you're raising your heart your heart palpitations and that's an automatic thing because you're panicking when you raise your heart palpitations then your mind is like oh my goodness I'm gonna die I'm gonna faint I may never wake up if I faint you're gonna wake up if you faint you're not gonna faint there's nothing wrong with you it is all in your mind it is a mind over matter situation it truly is and I am saying this because I do not have them anymore. I have stopped, relax, breathe, say to yourself, what am I afraid of? What are you afraid of? Nothing is wrong with you. Nothing is wrong. Anything that is bothering you in your life, you can fix it, you can change it. Nothing is permanent. Nothing's wrong with you. You're okay. I'm telling you, you are fine. You are fine. You have to corner that fear. You've got to talk yourself through the fear. And this took, I would say for me, it was maybe, it was a while. I worked on this for um, six months to a year when I would feel, and they got less and less and less panic attacks. Less panic attacks. Then I started working on my weight. <laughs> And that's a whole nother story, but I started working on my weight and I got my weight off. I started walking and eating better and I did, wasn't hungry like I you know, was after I got off the medication. But if you suffer from panic and anxiety attacks, you're afraid of taking the medication or the medication's not working for you, please try what I'm telling you because it works. I am living proof 100%. Stop. Just stop, sit down, breathe. What are you afraid of? There is nothing wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with you. You are perfectly, perfectly fine. And I'll tell you, that video, I feel personally, God showed me and Jay that video. God put that video to me. And I'm hoping that I can reach out to people through this video and I can help you with your panic and anxiety attacks. I really do. Leave any comments below, any questions. I would love to get back with you, help you in any way. And thank you for joining me. I will talk to you later. Bye.